Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. You, you know, so why do you think there's only like one percent of the people that uh, actually know about this global reset? Well, that's a loaded question. Uh, I'll try to give shorter answers from here on out. Um, <laughs> it, it's just this gets stuff gets real heady and cerebral. Um, mind control, inculcation, and an enemy that has gotten people have been comfortable. You know, your comfort zone will kill you. I've learned that long ago as an artist. <laughs> when I started getting complacent in my career, my music started to to get stale and languish, and I had to. The reason I got to whatever I level I got to was because I kept pushing myself. Mm -hmm. This is much the same thing. Our faith walk with God, this well transfer, complacency will kill you. And the enemy knows that. And, and he goes to great lengths to make people comfortable. So right. I would say all of those reasons are contributory as to why the majority of the world does not know. The world does not know what they don't know, because if you're not a truly, um, practicing believer who's seeking truth and wisdom in the sermon every day, you're going to have a hard time getting off the block, number one. Number two, um, comfortability, right? Number three, uh, because people want to be comfortable, they they want to just turn on the internet or the television and get one source of information and be, they want to hear something that tickles their ears or resonates enough of reasonability to them that they go, okay, that's the truth and that's that. Now, what am I having for breakfast or whatever? And so it's, it's, it's for all those reasons, it's hard for people to accept that they've been lied to all their lives. And especially in, you know, my generation, your generation and the generation, you know, before me, um, that that's the younger generation. Now uh, it's hard for people to accept uh, Mark Twain once said it best. Um, it's easy to con somebody. It's really difficult to convince them. They've been conned. So right. I would say pride and ego and fear are key drivers that the enemy uses that contributes to the reason why the majority of the world is totally in the dark about this. Yeah, good point. Good point. You know, I, I'm uh, thought about like Kuwait and how when Kuwait revalued and, and at first, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. And then boom, three days later, you know, it happens. But there was only a select group that knew about you know the the whole revalue of Kuwait but and and from what I've learned and maybe I'm right maybe I'm wrong is that um the with with Iraq that it kind of slipped out you know and then other people like the military started you know getting uh the uh Iraqi dollar or you know and then it went out outwards uh to other people is that true or or not yeah, I mean, this was never supposed to be in, this is proof of God, because, you know, man's agenda was that that we little simpletons would, as they think of us, right. um, would never see the light of day of this. We were never supposed to know about this, but God made a way in an opening. He even used Bush Jr., a Kabbalist, to do it, signing right. executive order, I could be wrong on it, but I think it's 13598 or something like that, that allowed American citizens to take advantage of this investment with the dinar back right. in late 2003. So again, that's just proof, Francine, that, um, you know, man makes his plans, but God directs our steps. Amen. And, and what God is going to make happen, he's going to open doors that no man can close and vice versa. Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. That's so good. I mean, it, you can even tap into I mean, God is so awesome because so many people put him in a box, mm -hmm. you know, and he'll just like uh, your favorite term, he'll just rip it open, you know? Yeah. If you leave for a little while, I come back and the box is shredded. Right. God's not going to be contained by this, you know? <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there are some people out there that are, you know, chicken little, the world is falling. We're not going to have any time. We're entering the rap, you know, the uh, tribulation and everything else. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on, you know, and they're not really impacting anybody or anything. They're just waiting for the rapture. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't, we don't adhere to that agenda. Right. Yeah. Same here. I, you know, I had, I had church parents that I, I loved and adored here in California for a long time. They moved to Texas with their daughter a couple of years ago and they're, they fall into that category. And I just couldn't talk to them about any of this, even when I wanted to bless them. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, well, we're just waiting for Jesus to come back. I'm like, why? You don't even know when that's going to be. Even Jesus doesn't know when it's going to happen. So what makes you think that you know better? 
I'm, I'm like, this pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib nonsense is ridiculous to me. I don't understand why the church is all caught up in that when you have no control over that. Just live your life for him every day. And when he comes, he comes. Your job isn't to predict, you know, the weather out, the weather outlook or God's return. Your job is to be faithful and use your talents and work, you know, serve him with all your heart and might and soul. And he controls the rest of it. I'd also like a lot of those religious Christianese legalists to answer me a question, to challenge these people in love. Mm -hmm. um, we're all familiar with Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the poor in spirit, right? right? Show me a verse where it says, blessed are the poor in finance. Where does it say that God wanted you to be poor? Yeah, yeah it says be content with what you have. That doesn't mean you're supposed to be poor your whole life. That means you're right. grateful when you're wealthy and when you're not, but you still push yourself to be your best for him, not for you. So I'd like some of those Christians to show me a verse where it says um, that God expects us to be poor and downtrodden. And that the, why is it always that the church is wealthy and the congregation is poor? Hmm. Why did Jesus have a, have a treasure? You know, I mean, he had, <laughs> poor Jesus had no place to play his head. He, they had money. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, Alan, Jesus rode a donkey, which was like a Mercedes Benz at the time. <laughs> So, so what are you talking about? I mean, yeah, right. it, 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 that's just ignorance on a lot of part of Christians who are very dogmatic and don't want to get out of the box. And, and I love these Christians. I'm sorry, but it's all in Revelation. No, it's not. No, it's not. I hate to break it to you, but the Ethiopian Bible is the real original Bible. And there's a lot more books in there than what we've been given access to by right. the church. So right. we don't know, Purpose. when did it become a sin to admit that we don't have all the answers, that we don't know everything there is to know? I thought the idea was to be humble and seek and get hungry for wisdom and knowledge every day. That's how you get to a certain point and you build on that, just like this wealth transfer. You yeah. know, there's a lot of people here in this community who they feel that God only wants them to have the dinar. If that's what he's told them, fine. Right. But if you're just saying, I feel like in your emotions, that I'm only supposed to have that. Well, you're missing out on the rest, the rest of what's in the buffet. Yeah, that's right. because there okay. is a buffet, isn't there? <laughs> Why don't you open up the menu and and share some of that buffet for those that are listening? <laughs> well, in tonight's menu, we have a lot of the <laughs> Um Yeah, I mean, there's 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 ostensibly the way I see it, and not just myself, but um, I'm going to give a little bit of an acknowledgement to two gentlemen who have taught me a tremendous amount in this process. Um, first of all, my mentor, Donald Ward, if he's watching, hey, Don, uh, very uh, a gifted, anointed man. And uh, there's, we could go into stories with him all day long with, with that, but he he has been mentoring me through this well trans for the, for the last 11 years. So nobody gets where they are without great guidance and leadership and mentorship. And and I think in mentorship, you you need to find somebody who's at your level, somebody who you can mentor, and somebody who will mentor you. That gives you the good counterbalance. And then I'll I'll put these other two gentlemen in kind of a two bucket system. <clears throat> One is um, John Nego Currency Three Sixty Five. They can find his channel on Eyes Open Media on YouTube or Patreon Currency Three Sixty Five. He's the only person that I actually invest to get divine intel because of his prophetic anointing and because of his accuracy over the last seven years that I've been listening. Um, another gentleman <clears throat> twisted his, his real name is Julius, but he goes by handle of TC, Twisted Christian. I don't know why, but that's his thing. <laughs> but he's very, very good at breaking down the wealth transfer. And he was the first person I ever heard years ago say, hey, the wealth transfer isn't just this or that. So, you know, on, on a very grassroots level, it's the currencies, right? All 209 countries and provinces, there's the precious metals, there's the cryptos, and there's a certain finite amount of cryptos, seven to 10, that I believe will make it, which we can touch on. Um, there's exotic bonds, right? There's land. There's uh, growing your own food is another currency. You know, if you remember uh, Brad Short, uh, Brad Pitt in The Big Short, he said seeds are the new currency. So right. the cabal does what's called predictive programming. They have to tell us in plain sight. They just don't have to make it obvious and because they can float it around people who go to movies and have no idea. They just got a bit of truth, right? Um, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's specific stocks, oil stocks, not necessarily mobile and shell and Chevron, the main players, but there's 
there's oil stocks, there's metal stocks, which we can touch on in a little bit. Uh, and then there's, um, uh, I'm trying to think, what's the eighth one? It, you know, just, uh, let's see, you could consider weapons because weapons use brass and silver in them, metals. Mm -hmm. That's another uh, a derivative of metals, but that's considered a separate kind of quasi category. Um, bartering, we're gonna go back to a bartering based system. Um, so when I was a kid, um, I asked my grandmother who lived through the Great Depression and World War II, how did they make it? And she said, oh, we just bartered. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, you see your back, the backyard here? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how we always plant stuff? I'm like, yeah. She goes, well, I grew corn and carrots and Eileen, my neighbor next door, grew cabbage and peas and we just traded off. And I said, that worked? She goes, yeah, everybody was happy. Everybody, three or four neighbors had everything everybody needed and we just bartered off. And I think we're going to get back to a bartering system because it's the best and most effective historical replication yeah. to a give people some humility where people start to people are the real currency through God, mm -hmm. right? Because we're all his priceless treasures. Mm -hmm. So I think bartering is a great way to go. And it's the most humble way to go where people are going to start to need each other again, not this, I've got mine and I'm doing my thing, me, my I, where the enemy has kept us whether Christians or not, in this prideful state of, of independence. We are interdependent beings. If we didn't need each other, God wouldn't have created so many people on the planet. We'd all just be automaton robots, which I know is what the cabal and the deep state had in mind, but right. that's not who we serve. So um, that's that's kind of a, a, simple, a simple breakdown, I think, of, of the extenuation of, of the forms of the wealth transfer mechanisms. Uh, very good. Uh, and uh, we've been getting a lot of questions in regards to what's the difference between an RV and an RI. It's very simple, really. Um, an RV is a revaluation that denotes countries who have never revalued before, like Thailand, like North and South Korea, like, oh, so many countries, um, Cambodia, um, you know, Venezuela, not Venezuela, um, El Salvador, uh, Nicaragua, countries like that, right? Um, those countries have never had their currency revalued. RI is a reinstatement. Iraq, Vietnam are perfect prime examples. Iraq pre-1940s was $4.07. Now, you'll remember, if you look back in your article history, whether it's Militiaman or Currency 365, several people have covered it that Iraq has said in the last couple of months, they're going back to 1940 levels. That's what that means, right? Um, in the 1950s, when Saddam Hussein was a little kid, the dinar was over $5. So they've been here before. And they're just going back to their history, but now on a digital asset back, that means gold platform. Uh, people underestimate how much gold Iraq has. Iraq is 30th in the world in gold and number two in the Middle East in gold reserves, or is it five? It's either, it's, it's either two or five, but they're in the top five of gold reserves. Did you know that a lot of American contractors, when they try to plumb for water in the, in the, in the desert there, it's very fine sand. I've had some friends who have served over in Iraq, so they've educated me on this. And you can go six feet below the ground with a backhoe and you'll pull up gold and diamonds and oil and other precious minerals. Did you know Iraq is the number one producer of phosphorus in the world? So if you're getting phosphorus in any form, it's coming from Iraq. Most people don't know that. Right. So they're, they're stupid, plentiful in resources. And so when they're, when they're plumbing for water, the contractors, what they do is, you know, they have the little uh, grates like we have here in America, you know, when the, the runoffs come from the street, you know, the water that drains out. When they are plumbing for water, little flecks of gold will come up that's how the country pays them. They pay the contractors. They let them keep the flex of gold. They literally pay them in gold. I had a, a military friend who fought over when Hussein was still alive and he gave him a bar of gold, just pulled one out and just gave it to him because <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. They, they have so much of it that they're so cavalier about it. So that's an example of, of an RI. Another example is Vietnam. Vietnam Pre-1986, before Russia took over, was $2.86. So they've been here before. Vietnam doesn't have, like Iraq, a financial problem. What they have is a corruption problem, not yeah. unlike us. But we're going to get into that a little later in the show, where China-Taiwan event plays a pivotal role in freeing up Vietnam and their dong. 
because what they have so much of is silver. Right. And if you look at uh, South Africa, their abundance is, is diamonds. Diamonds and gold. Good yeah. diamonds and gold. And gold. Yeah. The most gold right. in the world, actually, per capita. <laughs> trillions, trillions and trillions. They've got 132 million metric tons below ground, not including what they have above. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That's amazing. They're the breadbasket to the world. But now, how about America? Didn't we take the gold back from, like, Rome and... Yeah, we... We did all that, but but we don't really know how much gold we actually have in country because yeah. we haven't audited the Fed in forever, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, but sure. that's but that's coming. So it's coming because, as Q said, gold shall destroy the Fed. Now I'll give you a little interesting factoid. Mm. Did you know? Okay, so I always knew that the gold was not in Fort Knox because it's always the opposite of what they tell us, right? <laughs> Whatever the world tells you, as my friend Garrett says, go yeah. counterintuitive, go do yeah. the opposite. Yeah, so, I agree. Get ready to have your minds blown. <clears throat> this was a really interesting tidbit I learned a few months ago. Um, so I, I wanted to go visit the Grand Canyon for the longest time. In 2008, when I moved out here, I was able to go. And it's as beautiful as they say. And, and it's if you want proof of God, is if you need it, just go to the Grand Canyon. It's majestic, right? So um, I took a donkey ride down to the bottom, all six, three of me. And it was difficult, but I got down. <laughs> and I get there and I see all these ropes and partition security around these little um, like these little barricades in mines. And I, I'm a curious person. I, so I said, the security guy said, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. I'm like, what's going on here? He goes, oh, they're just, you know, private security stuff. I'm like, yeah, what are they guarding? He's like, oh, I'm not at liberty to say. I'm like, really? Couldn't give me a hint. He's like, no, nope, I'm sorry. I can't. I was like, okay. I knew something intuitively. You were asking Alan earlier about the Joseph thing. My Joseph instincts kicked in. That's some, not that you have to be a Joseph to do this, but I'm just saying something in my knowing was like they're not obviously they're not telling me the truth they're guarding something very valuable I, I don't know what it is but it's something valuable lo and behold did you know that behind the walls down at the bottom of the grand canyon are all these mines where they have plaster gold that's pure 24 karat gold that's like sheetrock you can peel it off like layers of papyrus former oh presidents have tried to get at it and been denied so does the does, do we have gold yeah do we have as much as other countries no how much do we have until we until we audit? We don't really know. They're right. saying a million tons. I think that's being generous. But mm -hmm. yeah, we certainly have the gold, but we're not number one by any means compared to countries like Zimbabwe. Wow, that's amazing. I never knew that. Never knew that. Um, yeah, go ahead, babe. No, I just want to shift gears a little bit, but uh, we get a lot of questions about Nassar Jassar. Mm -hmm. Go into that a little bit. Oh, it's real. I mean, I've had 40 or 50 people send me over the last three, four years, emails, text, hey, John, I just got my house payment forgiven. I got my credit card, my car, my medical bills were wiped out. I had people call the institutions and say, hey, um, I noticed my uh, my accounts um, at a zero balance and I still owe you know $10,000, $5,000, whatever it was. And in many instances, they're like, well, our records show that you're paid up. Or in some cases, we don't even have a record of you. It's totally been expunged. I love it. So they're not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. So no, it's it's absolutely real. Um, it's supposed to happen on September 11th. I was actually in New York City, by the way, uh, during 9-11. Wow. Uh, I, was, I was living in Brooklyn, and I worked on 684 Broadway, which is across from NYU, which is about six, seven blocks from ground zero. <clears throat> sounds like I was far enough away, but when you have an implosion of that size, all that, all that debris and sheetrock and whatnot is coming at you. It goes, it rolls down the blocks very quickly. Um, so I, I remember that day vividly. I didn't just watch it. I lived it. And, um, and, and for me to find out that what I thought I knew, you know, as a kid to come as an adult, realizing it really was an inside job and it was completely our government infiltrating its own people for the sake of keeping the wealth from us at the day that Nassar was to be enacted was, um, I'll just say diplomatically upsetting is a very diplomatic way to put it. It was infuriating and disgusting and all the emotions that you run the gamut in something of that magnitude. Uh, but yeah, no, no, Nassar is absolutely real. It is going to be at some point, I don't know the date, obviously, and we don't do dates and rates on my channel, but I know that in the not too distant future, it will be announced. How it's going to roll out, I don't know, but it, it will happen. And uh, people have already experienced it. I remember vividly 
August 28th of 2020. I have this very strange photographic memory to remember these things. Maybe that's part of the Joseph. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Too much time on my hands. But uh, August 28th during the pandemic that we were all um, under bunker with, uh, I got an email from a friend who had a military friend who shared a confidential picture. She had a Wells Fargo account and she showed me a screenshot, $301,944. I have two people who can back it up who saw it with me. And in the memo, it said in capital letters, N-E-S-A-R and the A was X'd out, but I knew what it spelled. So it's definitely been happening for years. It's just that it's been happening randomly to a person here, a person there. It hasn't been a rolling thing for the, uh, for the uh, contingency of the community of America, but that doesn't mean that, that it's not going to happen. I mean, you can't have all these massive layoffs, stock market crash, housing crash, real estate crash, and not have some way to compensate for it. So yeah. it's real. It will definitely happen. Uh, just a couple of days ago, um, you can go on my Telegram channel. I documented this. Uh, Ghana made a deal with the IMF to get $600 million of debt relief. Now that's a drop in the bucket, but what it connotates is that, you know, Jasara is definitely in full force mm -hmm. and we are going to, um, you know, have a restabilization of populations, people being able to go back to their home countries where they want to be and they deserve to be with their families. Sure. Their corruption will be removed. We're not going to have banker wars anymore because mm -hmm. the thing is, peace was not profitable. Now it is. And Trump will come in this year and all the manufactured chaos and he'll make peace deals, which, spoiler alert, he's already done. This is just front of scene stuff. Right. But he said many times, I'll make a peace deal within 24 hours because it's already right. been made. It's part of the BRICS nations. But those are all components of Nassar Jassara, removing banker wars, removing corruption, uh, you know, the taxation and all those things is going to have to, I mean, because taxation really is theft. There, there, I challenge anybody here to show me a law on the books from the IRS that says that individuals have to pay taxes. I've searched. Oh, IRS I'm agents have left their positions because they could not work for them anymore because they couldn't find a single law after pouring over books. There's been videos out there since 2000 about this. So all of those are components of Nassar Jassara. Which will which will be you know implemented front front of scenes here shortly. So do you think the IRS will be bye bye? Uh, yeah, next the, year. Next year. Yeah. Next okay. year they'll be gone. Okay, that's a, that's awesome. That's awesome. No, no, no. Yeah, good to know. And we, you know, a lot of people have questions in regards to the banking. Um, you know, when when this revalue happens and mm -hmm. uh, they they go and they exchange their currency. Uh, what happens if, you know, because other countries are gold uh, backed by gold and silver and we're still here in fiat. So what happens in that case? Great question. And and I'm, I'm not, <clears throat> I want to put out front that I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't constituted, constituting any financial advice. Um, <laughs> got my opinions about certain financial advisors, but because they're not trained for this, they're trained by the banks. That's right. why they're also eager to sell you, you know, long-term stocks and bonds, mutual funds. They're it's all debt, right? And I had somebody ask me a question: What about a savings bond? <laughs> when has that ever been worth anything? <laughs> You'd have to be Methuselah to get any value out of that, and that's not going to happen most likely. So, to me, that was always a lost cause. Yeah, I get twenty-five bucks when I'm one hundred and two. Oh, well, look forward to that date. Put that on the calendar. <laughs> oh, wait a minute! Jesus just came back. Yeah, ixnay on that. <laughs> Oh, but, right. uh, but um, yeah, I, as far as that goes, um, I'm going to try to simplify this. Take one note with you. This is part of the post RV preparations, kind of a, a, a appetizer, if you will, build a relationship with a wealth manager. It doesn't matter which bank it is. I personally am. And, and look, they're not all saints by any stretch. We're not, I'm not saying that, right. It's, it's the, it's the, it's the least of the, uh, it's the, what's, what's the, um, Least of evil. <laughs> yeah, the least, the, the, the minimum or the least of all evils. Thank you. Um, so for that, um, as far as major banks are concerned, tier one banks, right. I'm with Wells Fargo. They're not perfect. I'm not in love with them. I'm not in love with any of them. So I don't want to be jumping on and say, oh, I hate Wells Fargo. That's fine. I, that's not my point. Right. But they are part of the new system in terms of the asset back system. They are the flagship bank that started the currency exchange. That's the only reason that I'm still with them today. 
And I pray over my accounts every day. So that's Amen. Also something that's I recommend. Too. Start yeah. with that. But as far as the exchange goes, start with one note. It could be a $10,000, a $25,000, a $1,000 note of dinar. I don't care what it, whatever you got. Start with that. Get to know them. Ask to see the back screen rates. They have to legally show you that. That's the Forex rates. You can do that. Citibank has a currency hotline I can share with you after where you can call and get real-time rates. You can go on the CBI on Forex and know what the rate is at any time. It's not a mystery. They have to legally publish this stuff. That's why I said earlier, there's no way, I don't care what all these guru and self-appointed experts say, there's absolutely no way that you, you're telling me that 209 countries are going to blitzkrieg at the same time. Good luck with that. Right. That would cause mass chaos in the banks. They're, mm -hmm. they're still training right now to implement this. I mean, I've, I've taken pictures, uh, a friend of mine, David Mahoney, uh, he and I do shows uh, monthly. Um, I sent him some pictures last July of my Wells Fargo that I just saw this morning. Uh, one of the first Wells Fargo's I saw that retrofitted their office for to be wealth management advisors. You'll see that prominently, whichever bank you're in, Chase, Citibank, Wells Fargo, BOA, it doesn't matter. The, there's the commercial street banks, then there's the wealth management banks. That's why a lot of the banks are shrinking down and condensing. It's a way to get debt off their books, but they're setting this up for the wealth transfer. So bring one note in, build a relationship, slow and steady. If you feel comfortable with that person, <clears throat> say, you know what? They might say, hey, do you have any more dinar? I might. Why? Oh, because uh, the rate's going to go up in three days or whatever. Okay. Well, tell you what, you know, take their card. Say, here's my number. When it goes up to its full amount, give me a call. You're right. the one in control. You're holding the cards, not them. They work for mm -hmm. you. You don't work for them. Now, be nice to them. Be respectful. Don't create a scene, but don't don't panic and don't act all fearful. There's no reason. Remember, faith over fear. Yes. So as far as, and I say all this to answer your question, but I had to, to lay a little foundation. So forgive me. Um, once that's done, you do, you, you're going to have historical replication is that when Kuwait did the revaluation, it was a 90 day period. Mm -hmm. So they're going to give 90 days in between these currencies to exchange. Cause you got to remember there's people who live up in remote areas I, could be in the country. They don't have access to a major bank. They have to go, you know, long distances to a city or maybe the closest bank to them is a, a community bank. My understanding is that some of the community banks will partner. The community banks are considered, as you know, Alan and Francine, tier two banks, right? Mm -hmm. So there some of them, not all of them, will partner with the major banks in instances like that to help folks out to, to exchange because the banks make what's called a a uh, basis point. They're going to make one basis point off of every transaction, which equates to about $100,000. So they're not doing this because they're UNICEF. They're going to make money, <laughs> but but they're not going to be like some some guru or some uh, you know uh, redemption center deal or some private you know hotel thing. Because people look, people's hearts are going to be revealed in this season. Whether you're greedy for yourself. Or you want to help yourself, but you also want to help God and balance things out. That your heart is, you know, pure. I'm not talking about this nonsense that I hear about. Oh, you're going to show up to the bank and they're going to have a heart evaluator and read your heart light and all this. Oh, nonsense. I know. Yeah, right. I, I don't know what people are, are you know, that they're going yeah. to bring you a Q phone. No, you're not, people. I know what I'm talking about. I've met with the banks. I've dealt with wealth managers. I've met with private bankers who are willing to talk about this. None of that. They laugh when I talk about it. It's, it's I, embarrassing when people don't use discernment. I, I, it, I just shake my head in some of these comment sections. People believe these machinations and they just, whatever tickles their ears. You don't need any of that stuff. All you need to do is go to the banks, make your own appointment, hold your currency. Don't give it to some guy you don't know. Don't call some 800 number to somebody you don't know and divulge all your stuff. You're going to get scammed. That's why I said most people will not keep this wealth because they haven't, they didn't follow God's order. They didn't trust the Lord. They went off on their own ego and greed, and they didn't seek wisdom and discernment. And that sounds simplistic, but how many things do we do every day where we don't follow the basics and we get into trouble in whatever it is? But back to the genesis of your question, what do they do? My recommendation is once they're fully exchanged, as quickly and as calmly as you can, because it is still based in fiat dollar, yeah. and it will be for a time until the transition happens, 
as that dollar loses its, before the dollar loses its value, I, I'm telling you what I'm going to do and people can do what they want. As soon as this happens, my team and I, I have a common law trust mm -hmm. that's not a statutory trust, that's not taxable, that the IRS doesn't even acknowledge because it's not part of their system anymore. I'm divorced from it. I don't buy anything. The trust buys it. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So there's your baseline. Once I exchange, I'm buying land. I'm buying precious minerals, I'm uh, metals, and I'm buying junk silver. I, ha I did a show last week with a very, very educated financial expert, Bill Holter. Um, you might have seen him on X22 Spotlight with Dave. He's a no-nonsense, tell it like it is type of guy. He does not mince words. And I said, how much metal do you recommend everybody gets? He goes, $1,000 of junk silver per person in your household is a rule of thumb that I use. Those are his exact words. So I'm giving you his advice from the know. That's good. But junk silver is going to be a great way to trade without cutting up, you know, bars of silver or bars of gold to go to Walmart or to go to the grocery store. <laughs> right. you know, I don't, uh, can you break change for a billion? Uh, sorry. <laughs> you know? here, here's, here, here's a hunk of gold government cheese. Can I just take the store? You know, I mean, I, I, I did a Bible study with the men in my church here a few months back and I, I took out some of my own silver, some sleeves. And I said, gentlemen, this one, I'm trying to depict an image. This one gold, uh, silver coin, one ounce, will feed your family and clothe them for an entire month in the new economy. Because we're going to see, yeah. go, we're going to see gold this year, I think, into next year, well over ten thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. um, silver easily, one to two hundred dollars, no problem. Once silver breaks the thirty dollar suppression, it's moving up, yeah. and they can't they can't paper it forever because they run out of derivatives. Did you guys know that? Every time you buy an ounce of silver, you short the banks a billion dollars on their balance sheet. That was told to me by a private banker. I, I can't make that stuff up. I'm not that good. And so um, I would recommend people get into physical assets, things that you control, metals, land, weapons, if you like, definitely heirloom seeds, mm -hmm. get land with a water source. If you can do a surveyor and get land that has natural assets on it, like natural gas and oil, like I'm going to do, do it. As a professional musician, I'm buying high-end music equipment that has certain metals in it that I've already mentioned because that retains the value. That yeah. equipment will appreciate, not depreciate. Most music equipment loses about 10% every year on average, like a car. A car might be a little bit more, but it's in that range. But when you buy things that hold their value, that are physical, tangible assets you control and hold, you can't lose. So that that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I would recommend others do in this exchange process. Yeah, and and tapping into that a little bit deeper too. I mean, we talked about XRP and XLM, mm -hmm. uh, X uh, XDC, I believe mm -hmm. it is right. Yep. So yep. that was the new one for me. And <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, those uh, share a little bit about that because um, uh, if I understand correctly. Um, they're they're gold silver backed and uh, ones for international and ones for national and it's attached to the um uh, qfs is that true yes so okay. so xrp is the gold standard backed by gold on a one-to-one -one ratio i sent you a, a snapshot a screenshot of that to use at your leisure for your audience and my again my friend john who's incredibly proficient at cryptos i'm i'm still learning i mean i'm learning across the board but i'm really these days focusing a lot on crypto because the other stuff I kind of have a, I think a decent grasp and, and understand it, but um, it just think, tie it all back to assets, right? Um, so again, that's an East, that's another example, Francine of an East West reset, right? So XRP is the gold standard for the blockchain. ISO 20022 is the standard of, of practice and instruments to keep those as uh, stable coins, right? <laughs> coins that will hold their value like gold and silver that don't fluctuate on a fiat system. Mm -hmm. um, XRP is coming into a great place here in the next, I'm being conservative, six weeks, maybe two months, where the SEC is just going to drop the case because they know they can't win. They've already lost. They're just tying it up in appeals. And the reason people ask, why is the SEC so against XRP? Because they're in bed with Ethereum. Ethereum has been the monopoly and they get their bread buttered in a corrupt way that way. But now XRP is going to break free. They're going to drop the case, no fines, no nothing. And they're going to just win outright. And then you're going to see at some point here, 
the corrupt Gary Gensler, who's the chairman of the SEC, who's definitely Kabbalist, who's definitely a friend of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, he's going to be ousted because they're going to get a black eye when they lose that case. Then you have um, XLM, Stellar Lumens, which is backed by silver. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, XDC, which I was teaching about the other night, is backed by copper. And so I want to, edu- I don't know if educate or, or maybe illuminate your, some of your audience or maybe remind them of things they maybe already know, but just need a, re- a refresher. Um, XLM and silver in general are really exciting because I would argue that silver is more valuable than gold. Why? Because it's cheaper and easier to get. But two, and more importantly, think about this, guys, in your home. You guys have computers, right? You have iWatches. Um, you have cars. You have chips in those cars. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, manufacturing. What I'm getting at is that that virtually everything that we use has silver in it, right? And so silver is the backbone of manufacturing and there's a run on silver. So that means there's a supply and demand issue with silver. There's plenty of gold. There's more gold than silver. So they can use gold to stabilize the economy where silver is a backstop. But what happens when silver runs out? Well, two things. Number one, uh, I believe corporations are going to come to people and make buyback offers at some point because those who are holding any, you know, especially God's people should be doing this. That's why we're here any substantial amount of silver, they'll want to buy it back because they need it for manufacturing. What happens when corporations run out of silver? They've got to go to something else, copper. We're already using copper. We use again fiber optics, copper pans, copper tubing for your, for your plumbing. How many instances on TV have you seen where tweakers go in and cut out the copper pipes because they've got value? And right. copper is really cheap right now. I think it's under $4 a pound. So this is the optimal time to start getting copper. And I've been told by metals experts that instead of the coin, which is fine, but the copper wiring in in long form is even better to get because Mm -hmm. of how it's used. And then, so that's, that's XDC. I would also recommend people get platinum and palladium rounded out. You know, that's IOTA, Algorand, right? And then there's another coin we can talk about that I'm sure many people know about. And I, I can already see people who know this gritting their teeth. But we got to talk about the elephant in the room, and that's Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu, which is run by Satoshi Kuzama, who who has been uh, not doing nice things and suppressing this and uh, on purpose holding the wealth back, he is going to be compelled at some point to let go. And that is another decentralized token, like Bitcoin, like XRP will be, where it will be its own independent platform. That's another way that you become a central bank. So there's many ways to become a central bank, gold and silver, your own land, things I mentioned. This is another example of why we're talking about it. So at some point here in this year and beyond, Shiba Inu is going to break free. They have what's called the Shibarium. And you've got Sheila Inu, uh, Sheena Ibu. There's all these other sub tokens inside of the Shibarium. They're using it now in the metaverse. I'm not condoning the metaverse. I'm just saying it's an unfortunate reality that a lot of people are sucked into, which I don't recommend, but it is what it is. But you can take advantage of that Shiba for a short time and work on that independent platform, right? And you can buy things um, through the Shibarium, which breaks up again, the monopoly of Ethereum. So XRP lays the groundwork for other coins like Shiba to come in for a, a limited period of time, grant you. Um, mind you, that will allow people to be in decentralized platforms. So th- there's, I would say, seven to 10 coins that will make it. And then there'll be a lot of these meme tokens that just go away. So don't just be like, you know, uh, throwing darts at a board and just guessing randomly. Be very strategic about what you get into and why you get into it. Um, but getting into things that have asset backing or have decentralization platforms, I think is a really good idea. Yeah, that's 